Welcome, everybody, to College Football's Best Bet here on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. Today, we're going to look at a big rivalry game on Saturday night. As in Morgantown, the West Virginia Mountaineers will battle the Penn State Nittany Lions in a huge game with big ramifications, especially for Penn State, who is a highly ranked team headed into this year. James Franklin doesn't seem like he has the capability to win the big one, which would be Ohio State, Michigan, whoever's ranked in the top 10. West Virginia is not ranked there, but West Virginia is a very good team who finished last year or last year very strong with five straight wins. And this looks like it's going to be a tough matchup. Now, the thing about Penn State, the thing that's come out of their training camp right now, is that basically all the players are calling it tough, physical. In fact, a lot of the players tend to agree that it was the toughest training camp they've ever been through, including defensive tackle Devon J. Thomas, who called it the most challenging camp of his six seasons in Penn State. He said it was basically daily violence. Now, this seems the perfect segue into the 2024 Penn State football season, which begins with more playoff hope than ever. Number one, more teams are in. So if you come in second or third in the Big Ten, you still got a legitimate shot to make the playoffs. They have an experienced roster, a reasonably favorable Big Ten schedule, and a 12-team college football field. All this should benefit the Nindy Lions and their goal to get to the college football playoffs. As should Saturday's season opener at West Virginia where Penn State will reach the jet stream of its schedule right away. This is going to be a big game. It's noon Saturday. It's going to be a huge crowd going nuts for West Virginia. You're going to have country roads playing all the time. John Denver's going to be singing. And the storyline for this game is really Penn State returns 23 players with starting experience, including seven primary starters on offense, but still races into 2024 with plenty of change. Up front are three new coordinators, notably offensive coordinator Andy Kolnetke, whose no-pressure job description includes beating the schedule's best teams. West Virginia will be one of them. So Kolnetke gets no soft opening for his offense, which he understands. Now, Kolnetke spent the last eight months spreading to install his offense while pausing to make sure the players got every new nuance of what he was trying to teach them. For the most part, quarterback Drew Allar and his teammates have raved about the offense. They like the plays. It seems to fit the skills, and they appreciate how it masks simplicity with complicated tasks. Now, it's one thing to do that in practice. Everything looks good on paper. How would they be able to execute? Now, Penn State will introduce Kulanicki's offense with the new tech tools that the NCAA approved for the season, including communication devices between Kulanicki and Allar. Penn State has used the microphones for offense and defense, both in practice and Beaver Stadium scrimmages. The team contact, contracted with an outside company to cut the mics at the 15-second mark as per NCAA rules. And the Navy Lions have tested backup systems like signals, wristbands, in case the mics don't work. Now, there's a lot to process here for Penn State with the new offensive coordinator. Now, the players to watch for me, are, especially on offense for Penn State, tight end Tyler Warren. The Nittany Lions are going to run Nichols Singleton and Catron Allen heavily against West Virginia. We already know that. But their quarterback still needs reliable targets in the passing game, expecting to lean heavily on his All-American candidate, the six foot six tight end, who was Penn State's top returning pass catcher. In fact, Aller, in fact, Penn State can target several tight ends, notably redshirt freshman Andrew Rapalia as well. And I know I probably screwed that name up but it is what it is. Offensive lineman Drew Shelton. You know, he missed spring practice, but that hasn't seemed like a significant setback for Shelton, who will replace first-round draft pick Alua Fashana at left tackle, yet he also represents the eternal question of Penn State's line. Will its promise deliver? Running back Katron Allen. The junior seems to be shedding weight in his fat man nickname. Allen is listed at 220 pounds on Penn State's latest roster, Nine pounds lighter than he was during spring drills. Though Singleton has the home run speed, Allen could add more quickness and agility with his lighter frame. On defense, quarterback A.J. Harris is a standout. The Georgia transfer will likely make his first start in Penn State secondary. Position coach Terry Smith called Harris a five-star athlete with a five-star mentality. High praise from a coach who has, mentioned, or who has mentored some NFL talents recently. 
but the but the Mountaineers might want to challenge Harris early before he gets too comfortable in Penn State's system. Now, uh, West Virginia players to watch: quarterback Garrett Green, West Virginia's second-year starter, scored in an eye-popping 13 rushing touchdowns last season, tied for the most amongst FBS quarterbacks. He also cut a cut a few nice runs against Penn State, rushing for 71 yards last year. So the Lions are prepared for him to run, which might give Green some space for play-action throws against Pitt State's new corners. West Virginia will probably be able to run the ball, but if they can't throw the ball with Garrett Green, it's going to be a long day, and they're going to come up short in this game. Now, up front, offensive lineman Wyatt Mill- Millam. West Virginia's left tackle hasn't allowed a sack in two years and fronts an opposing group that returns 60 starts from last season. Millam uh, leads another line that will be difficult to track. West Virginia led the FBS in rushing in 2023 and ranked third in fewest sacks allowed with 10. Once again, the pass blocking is going to have to be there because I think they'll be able to run the ball, but passing the ball is going to be the biggest question in this game. If they throw the ball successfully, West Virginia can win this game. Now, at running back, you got Jaheim White, though not the biggest back. He's only 5'7", about 190 pounds. He has bloomed into the most versatile player and proper companion to C.J. Donaldson. Look for White as an additional receiving target. He's improved significantly in that area in the offseason. Now, quarterback Garrett Hollis Jr., now Northwestern transfer, went viral with his comments regarding Pitt State's lack of respect beyond Ohio State and Michigan. Might the Nittany Lions be tempted to address those comments by testing the senior defensive back who played against Pitt State twice with the Wildcats? My prediction for this game, eight and a half points is a lot of points for a West Virginia team. It looks like they're rounding into shape. They finished last year red hot. They were able to run the ball. They were able to dominate the line of scrimmage on offense. Now, Penn State largely has the better roster and more star power, particularly on defense. And despite some middle, midfield lapses, the Nitty Lions held West Virginia to seven meaningless points last year. Yeah. West Virginia scored a late touchdown against Penn State's backups. That was a game that was close for over a half, though. And still, Franklin has made Harrowing road opener is a resume bullet point. For some reason, every season opener, Penn State has played away from Beaver Stadium under Franklin. But they still get it done. And I think that happens again here. I think the Nittany Lions will escape this game. But if I'm betting this game, I'm going to take the eight and a half points and I'm going to take the West Virginia Mountaineers. Right now, I think Penn State's about three to one favorite to win the game. I think West Virginia is like plus two forty, plus two eighty in that area. I don't think that's a horrible bet. But when I look at this, Penn State has a better roster on paper, and they've been consistently good over the last five or six years. And if you all of a sudden put Ohio State or Michigan uniforms on West Virginia, I would probably go with Penn State. But they're not. They're going to wear West Virginia uniforms. It'll be at West Virginia. It'll be a great college football atmosphere. I think Penn State wins this game 27-21. to 21, But I'm going to bet Penn State when I go to bet MGM, and I'm going to take the eight and a half points. Make sure you get to bet MGM for your top sports book for betting on college football this year. Check out all the articles on The Grilly Truth by going to thegrillytruth.com. We'll have a lot of picks for this week. We'll start with the picks to the NFL next week. And make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell notification on YouTube whenever we do a game preview or an NFL show or college football show. So you're up to date and you get that. You can follow us on X at Grueling Truth. But for now, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been watching and listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.